Hey there Titans, and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be talking about one of my favorite features in Titan, and that is the power table. We're going to do a basic overview of the power table, how to configure, write your condition, and bring the fields that you want into your table. We'll talk about triggering actions from power tables, we'll talk about subcomponents in power tables, and then we'll go over some of the interactivity that you can add to your table. Let's get started. I'm going to click on my pink plus button and search for power table and I'll drag that onto my canvas. You'll notice the first thing is that you can select a source from where you want to bring your data from. This can be an object in Salesforce, a report, or an Apex. In my case, I'm going to be bringing this from account, but keep in mind that you can bring this from any object that you have in your Salesforce, whether that be a standard, custom, managed package object, it does not matter, we can bring it all. I'll bring 20 records from an account, and I'll write a condition here say that the SLA needs to equal gold. Keep in mind you can do much more complex conditions with many rules and or or statements with parentheses if you need and we can also reference fields from our project not just give static values like this but we can also have built into our condition values that exist on our project. Let's keep it like this from now and we're going to click next and we are ready to do our mapping. The first thing you'll notice is that you have a value, which normally will be the record ID for your object. This is the value that sits behind the scenes for each row on your power table. Let's add some fields to our table. We're gonna add the account name. We're gonna add the SLA so we can see that we're only getting gold. And let's add mm, the created date so that we can format a date as well. Notice that we have the field itself from Salesforce, but also the label that the end user will see. So I will rename this, for example, to company name, and this will be the column title for this specific column. We can also give our end user the ability to edit fields on our power table, and we can do that by clicking on these three dots and then clicking on the allow edit switch. This will allow them to inline edit and make updates in real time in Salesforce. Let's take a look at some of the other field types we have here. We've got normal uh, fields to bring data from Salesforce. As we discussed, we have static fields where we can write um, static text. And we'll actually do this to see in a moment how we can bring contacts under an account. So we'll leave this here for now and we'll get back to it. We also can bring in an index. We can see um, what number row we're looking at. And we can also bring in icons and buttons. These both have on click actions so that we can trigger actions once they are clicked. With an icon, we have a lot of icon options to choose from here. And we can also do button and set up certain button styling. Let's actually create a button here. And we'll say here, um, color row. Okay, we'll set up an action to actually color the row that we click. Okay, let's go ahead and do that now. Now my on-click action, I'm going to go ahead and do element interactivity, table interactivity. I'm going to do a specific action to my table. I'm going to set a background color to my table. Okay, it hasn't registered my table yet, so we're going to have to first apply our table edits, and then we'll come back in to configure the action. So, coming back here, I'm going again to element interactivity, table interactivity. I am doing color background, and I'm selecting my row style for this particular row that I'm clicking on. And let's set up what kind of... Um, color I want here, I'm just going to go ahead and grab a hash from the internet. Let's do a color hash for red. Let's grab this. And we'll do next. And I'll just say color row on table. Obviously, we can do much more complex things like deleting records in Salesforce, emailing a record from a power table, updating a record that you click on the button, 
um, downloading files from our power table, really have a lot of options with what we can do with these actions. Um, and the last option here that we didn't cover is input fields. We were not going to go too deep into this today, but essentially we can give our end user the option of actually inputting data into the power table and they can do whatever they like that with that data. For example, push it to Salesforce. Um, we have a lot of different input types that you can use for your power table. For now, let's just get rid of this and we'll go into that in a separate video. Let's apply it. And our table is almost ready here. The next thing I want to do is format my created date as we discussed. So I'm going to head over to columns and I'll go to created date and I will add a format for this. Let's do this one right over here. There are many options here that we can do as well, but for now we'll just do a format. All right, let's see how things are functioning as is and then we'll do some updates in the interactivity. So I'm going to preview my power table. And you'll notice here, I get my index, my company name, my SLA. Notice that I can edit my company name. So I'll write here, um, Titan Inc. And once I focus out of that field, this is already saved automatically in Salesforce in real time. For example, if I come here to Salesforce integration, I can see that this record was updated in Salesforce. I've got my created date, my contact field, which we did not configure our subcomponent yet. We will do that in a moment. And I can color my row by clicking on my button. Excellent. Now let's head back in and we will configure a subcomponent so that I can see the contacts under my account. So I'm going to head over to content, edit mapping, and under my contact here, I'm going to click on the three dots and configure a component. I will do a table component and I will bring in, again, this could be any object in Salesforce as long as there's a relationship between the parent and the child. I'll bring in 20 contacts whose account ID matches the power table value of the row that I've selected, which again is the account ID of that row. And now I'm going to map a couple of simple fields, first name, last name. By the way, of course, I can make this condition more complicated. I can say not only do I want to only bring accounts, sorry, contacts that are under this account, but also only contacts that are under this account that have a certain domain in their email or a certain checkbox checked on their contact, anything at all. I can refine this condition if I'd like. For now, I'm just going to leave it as is. And I'm going to go ahead and click apply. And I will apply again. And you'll notice now that I have this subcomponent. So let's save and preview and take a look at our subcomponent. Okay, so I'll look at a specific account. I'm not sure which account will have contacts. Let's try this one right over here. I can see that this account has a number of contacts. Um, of course, I could have also added um, editing abilities to these contacts. Let's take a look at a different account that I think will not have contacts. Here you can see no data was found because this specific account does not have any contact. Okay, so we've seen a lot of cool things, formatting dates, um, bringing in values from Salesforce, subcomponents where we can bring in related records to our parent table, and some actions that we can run from a button on our table as well. Let's take a look at some more of the interactivity. We're not going to cover everything here, but we'll take a look at a couple of options. First of all, we have cool functionality called auto grow. Okay, this will make sure that your table will automatically resize based on the amount of records that return. Um, let's also enable sorting. Okay, and we're going to sort by created date. All right, and let's also allow filtering and allow us to filter by company name. Okay, you can also filter by a number of different options here. Okay, you don't have to only select one option. Um, and again, there's a lot of different things that we can do here. We'll cover everything in a separate video. I just want to show you some basic ideas. So we'll save and we'll preview. And now if we take a look, we can see that first of all, I can filter, I can sort, excuse me, by created date. So I can see here 
I can go all the way back, decide how I want to sort that. And now I can also filter down by company name here. So for example, I'm only seeing things that contain TIN in this example. And I can also format for really, sorry, filter for really any account that I want to find quickly. Finally, you can see that the table has grown. Like if you see in preview here, that we're only up to see, able to see up to four, but since we have auto grow turned on, it actually pushed to be as large as possible. All right, so those are some of the ba basics for configuring a table. We talked about a lot of different things, bringing data from Salesforce, being able to edit data in line, in real time, um, subcomponents to bring related records, actions on our tables, affecting specific rows on our table with a color, um, different interactivity options such as auto grow, filtering, and sorting. There's a lot more to learn about power tables and we'll go into everything in a separate, more advanced video. Hope you enjoyed and good luck using the power table.